Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Non-Farm Payrolls webinar with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 4th of January 2019 and the time has just gone 13.15 GMT, quarter past one here in the UK. Uh, before we actually get going with the, with the webinar, what we're going to do as always is quickly run through the, the risk warning slides which I'll leave on screen. Uh, they're very straightforward. They essentially state uh, anything that is covered in this webinar uh, is not um, trading advice um, or trading, uh, not, it's not in any way investing advice or trading advice, just purely my own comments and observations and opinions. Uh, and, it should be, and it should not be construed uh, as, as trading advice. So please have a quick read through those slides. For those of you who tune into our videos and our webinars frequently, you will know this is all fairly common practice. Uh, and as always with the webinar, what, what I'm going to do uh, for non farm payrolls is run through, um, run through what's going on in the news, talk about the state of the US economy, what can we expect from non farm payrolls, and then wait for the numbers often themselves, gauge the market reaction, uh, and then after that, if there are any questions you have throughout the webinar, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, and then towards the end of the webinar, I, I directly encourage questions in relation to what's going on in the financial market. So the reactions um, to the non farm payrolls numbers once they're out in about 13 minutes' time. Um, so what I'll quickly, quickly, quickly talk about is the kind of very volatile week we've seen uh, here um, in European equity markets and actually global equity markets as, uh, as a whole. Uh, at, at, the, at the very beginning of the week, uh, what we saw was some quite negative, some, some quite downbeat news uh, out of China. Um, the Kaishin Manufacturing Survey contracted, uh, so the, that was in a negative growth state. Uh, it was the first contraction in 19 months. Um, only a couple of days ago, we heard from Apple, who essentially downgraded or lowered their lowered their first quarter forecast in terms of revenue, and also the, and also uh, said that, that the gross margins would be lower. Uh, due to look weaker sales in China. Now this wasn't an entirely so this wasn't entirely a shock because uh, a, a number of months ago um, Apple came out and stated that what they're going to do is they're going to stop uh, in their in their in their quarterly updates they're going to stop stating how many individual units they sell and they're going to just focus on the total revenue. Now the new iPhone models that are coming out are going up uh, in price, so the average price is being is being dragged higher by the by the cost price of the new models. So it seems to me that Apple were already kind of sent out a warning saying that you know what guys, don't look at the individual sales, just look at the total revenue. With total revenue is obviously units multiplied by the price. Average price is going up, so therefore they're trying to distract us and and. and draw attention away from the fact that, you know what, sales may not be rising that much, or even if they are rising, they might be rising at a slower rate. So I think this wasn't an entire shock. And there's a possibility that it isn't just, they did it cite China, but there's a possibility that it isn't just China who are actually slowing down. And in fact, it could be a wider play. Nonetheless, this put a lot of pressure on global equity markets in recent, in the last, uh, earlier in, in the middle of this week. Overnight, uh, we have heard some Recently optimistic news, um, Beijing and Washington DC are going to sit down next week and have some discussions at mid-level range, mid-level kind of government ranking levels in relation to trade. Traders are a bit optimistic of this. Now, nothing has been confirmed. It's just purely as simple as saying we're going to have uh, discussions and talks. But given that the Chinese stock market has, has dropped a considerable amount of value, given that uh, President Trump's pride and joy, the the, 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 the uh, the Dow Jones and the and the S&P 500 have given up so much ground um, in the last number of months. Both sides may be a bit more uh, accommodative than they previously were. Uh, a few months ago, the U.S. economy was, was clearly in a better shape than, than the Chinese economy. Now we're seeing some signs the U.S. economy is slowing down. We're also seeing hearing concerns about the potential recession in the U.S. economy. That's in more in relation to do that the movements in the in the uh, in, in the uh, in, 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 in price action. In the bond yields, which have previously um, forewarned on recession, so that even the talk of recession and some of the economic indicators out of the U.S. have been a bit mixed, or in some cases actually not great as a whole. Uh, so because of that, uh, traders are a bit fearful um, about the state of the U.S. economy, and so should President Trump. Um, his, his, his hand isn't as strong as it once was, and if 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 traders, if the people keep viewing the sell-offs in, in U.S. stock markets as a, as a full warning to recessions, that's going to look bad for President Trump because, he, because in 2018, 
He was all about, look, all my policies are boosting the stock market. Look, all, look, all unemployment is falling and so on. Um, obviously, we'll have the unemployment numbers out in about nine minutes' time. Uh, so the situation has changed. And on top of that, uh, the Beijing authorities have also come out with, with some stimulus packages. Uh, they've come out and basically helped assisted the Chinese economy by reducing the reserve requirement ratio, which is essentially the kind of the cash ratio uh, banks in China are supposed to hold in relation to the loan books. So by cutting that, they're allowing Chinese banks to actually lend more, which put more money into the economy. And there's also talk of some tax cuts uh, in the pipeline as well. Uh, so with that, uh, we, we have seen a boost in global, in global equity markets. Strong session in China overnight, strong session in Europe today. We're looking higher. For the US market so it seems that it's going to be continue to be a volatile week but keeping in mind the news that we in recent weeks and months we have had a cases where the Chinese authorities have come out and brought a new stimulus or, or kind of quasi stimulus or, or alterations to how they do how they regulate business in relation to actually trying to propping up the stock markets and also to help turn around the economy and it hasn't worked uh, so I'm a bit skeptical if this uh, if, if these moves will work again because it's a funny old, it's a funny old game whereby while a, while a country while a, while a government keeps intervening in the in the market some intervention will assist the market and will, will help turn the market around if you keep intervening in a market which is kind of going against you or an economy which is going against you you might send out the wrong message you might send out on the message of you know what we actually keep keep need to intervening because the economy is in such a bad shape and then all of a sudden if people kind of you know look beyond that they could become fearful that, that they can't, that they, that they, that they can't slow down or, or they can't halt the declining rate of the Chinese economy. So I am still a bit skeptical of the state of, of global growth, uh, which also brings me on to the state of the US jobs market. And the US jobs market is actually in quite decent shape. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the trading platform, which is right here in front of you, let's take a look at the, um, the market calendar. Uh, here it is. Uh, it's the fourth option down. Scrolling down to the market calendar, we're, we're not going to be looking at what we could expect out of the U.S. Um, today in, in terms of the uh, in terms of the unemployment figures. So scrolling down along here, non-farm payrolls we're expecting 177,000. Keep in mind um, that the November figure was 155,000. Um, the unemployment rate is tipped to hold steady at 3.7%. Um, on a year-on-year -year basis, and we're expecting the average earnings to be 3%, which would be a slight cooling from the November reading of 3.1%. And on a monthly basis, we're expecting the average earnings to actually increase by 0.3%, uh, and that would be an improvement on the previous reading of 0.2%. Now, for me, the most important uh, detail of this report is going to be the earnings, compo the earnings component. Uh, the unemployment rate is at 3.7 percent. It's a set, it's it's at multi-decade lows, and when you get to that point where you're all you're, you're essentially at full employment, it's actually quite difficult to kind of keep grinding down and actually adding new jobs because it kind of gets to the point whereby anybody who wants to be in a job is sort of in a job, or the or even if you do have incrementally higher increase in unemployment, in the grand scheme of things, it ain't really gonna ain't really gonna shake things up too much. For me, it's all about the earnings. When American workers earn more money, they're likely to go out and spend more money, and that's what was driving the economy. And we've seen a cooling in house prices, we've seen a cooling, a cooling in, in, um, in say, manufacturing activity recently, only, only yesterday. Uh, what we've also seen is a bit of hesitance about consumer spending on top of that. Major sell offs in the, in, in the, uh, on the stock market that make the, make, the, make, the, make the six o'clock news and chatter of recession from time to time also makes players, investors, sorry, consumers a bit apprehensive. So for me, I want to see a good earnings component. I want to see both the yearly and also the monthly numbers to be quite decent before we can actually become more confident that the U.S. economy is going to, you know, is is uh, is in fairly decent shape. Now traders will be viewing these figures through the eyes of the Federal Reserve. Uh, last month, the Federal Reserve hiked interest rates by 0.25%. It was a it was, it was the fourth rate hike of 2018. But also, they gave a bit of a, a mixed update. Um, they were slightly dovish in their outlook for the state of the U.S. economy, but they were a bit hawkish in what they planned to do in 2019. Uh, they talked about how they foresee slightly so, slower growth and how they they could they, they foresee slightly weaker inflation. But at the same time, they also said they're talking about having they're hiking rates twice in 2019. And as it se seems out to me that they are talking about a slowing down in the economy yet. Further tightening of the monetary policy, both in terms of balance sheet 
uh, winding down and also in terms of higher interest rates. So, and that is one of the reasons why we did see a bit of a, that's what we saw, a fairly sizable uh, wobble um, in US uh, indices and also global indices because, because the fear is if economy is, if you're hiking while the economy is slowing, that could bring on a recession. And there's already talk of recession uh, during the rounds to begin with. So that's one of the issues to be concerned about. So traders are also very concerned about the slowdown in China, the slowdown in Europe. We had disappointing uh, service figures out of Europe today. We had disappointing service figures out of Europe yesterday. This morning's Eurozone um, CPI figures were weak, so it's just, it suggests demand is falling there. So you might look at this report and go, you know what, Dave, if we have a bad number today, that will actually slow down the Fed. That will, that will really kind of put the brakes on the Fed and make the Federal Reserve think about you know, not hiking uh, for, not hiking rates for a number of months, or maybe if they do hike, only hike in the back end of 2019. I think if we see a soft number today in terms of the overall report, we can actually um, add downward pressure to the uh, to the um, to the U.S. stock market and global stock markets because there's already kind of fear about we're kind of almost a bit past the fear of the, of the Federal Reserve hiking rates while into a slowing economy. We're kind of now at the, at the stage where traders are a bit concerned uh, that we could have a global slowdown. And some of the economic indicators of the U.S. have been mixed recently. We saw an increase in jobless claims yesterday. That was offset by a very, very strong ADP employment number. ISM manufacturing was um, was, was, was a, a big drop off in activity on that. Housing figures of the U.S. of the U.S. haven't been particularly impressive recently. So I think um, we, need a, we need a kind of a Goldilocks report on this one. We kind of need it just right. If it's too strong, that could... That could uh, scare the market in, in thinking, you know what, we're going to have a, we're going to have a few more rates in 2019. If it's too weak, that could be a sign. You know what, the US is um, the US is kind of is catching the cold uh, that, that that the rest of the world has. You know, we've seen the slowdown on China, slowdown on Europe, and we also could be seeing cracks in the in the US economy. Um, like I was saying, for me, it's all it's going to be largely about um, the earnings component and this report. The the uh, the jobless claims figure. I'm sorry, apologies. The non-farm payroll figure really needs to be looked at as an entire report. So we have a headline figure, we've got a potential revision to last month's number, uh, we've got unemployment, and we've got the, and we've got the two earnings components. So we really do have five bits of information to keep an eye on. So I know everyone's always fixated on the 177 um, uh, expectation, but the in my reports need to kind of digest the report as a whole and. Down the years, I've seen too many times where the market moves one way. They, they look at whether the headline figure beats or doesn't beat beat the um beat whether whether it beats or not, uh, and then from there they can actually very they kind of place all the trades around that. Then what happens? Uh, then what happens is they dive, they look at the report, they look at the numbers, and they realise actually you know what we've actually had um fairly deep you know the report the remainder report was direct opposite of the report. So sometimes you see a miss on the headline, but everything else was good, or vice versa. Sometimes you see a very strong headline, but other components were weak, and the market kind of does, does, a, does a turnover. So we'll just kind of uh, hang, hang on here one second. We're about a minute to go or so, waiting on for the uh, for the, for the job claims. Um, given how things are going, I think we're going to probably see about a kind of 160 or 165 region in terms of uh, in terms of actual headline figure. I think it'll be a bit softer than expected. Uh, what do you guys think? Feel free to kind of stick in your uh, estimates um, into the, the chat section. Uh, as long as the US economy is producing on average about 200,000 jobs. Oh, wow. That is a colossal number. Just uh, one second there, please. 312,000 jobs. Non-farm payrolls jumped by 312,000 jobs in December. The unemployment rate also rose to 3.9%, up from 3.7% the previous month. Average hourly earnings, they increased as well, up wow, 11 cents to 27. This appears to be an exceptionally strong report. 312,000 jobs were added in December. Smash the expectation of 177,000. We also looked at a pre what appears to be a revision to 176,000 up from 155,000 in November. So as a double win, smashed the headline expectations and a positive revision. Unemployment though also ticked up from 0, 0. sorry, ticked up to 3.9 percent from 3.7 percent, which isn't good, which isn't great. But guess what? Average earnings on a year-on-year -year basis ticked up um, to 3.2 percent. Topping the 3% forecast and improvement on the 3.14 previous. 
Average earnings on a monthly basis came in at 0.4%, topping the um, 0.3% expected, and the solid improvement on the zero on the 0.3% rise that we saw in November. All around, I would probably give this report like a, an A minus. Uh, again, an A minus. The only kind of dot, uh, marks have been docked because the unemployment rate also ticked up. But, but guess what? Like I said at the top of the webinar, unemployment is essentially it was at multi-decade lows, but we're now very close to multi-decade lows. This is it's an exceptionally strong number. And, and, and I think traders could be a bit spooked, thinking, you know what, we could have, uh, we could get, we could see the Federal Reserve continue uh, to kind of hold a hawkish action plan for 2019, given on, on giving um, what's going on here. Uh, if there are any kind of comments or questions, um, bring the markets down. I'll have to take a quick look at the, at the initial reaction. My guess is that traders will be fearful um, of further of tightening, and we, we could see a decline in uh, in, in equities. That's my that's my reaction. Let's see what, what the market thought. There we go. Well, a bit of a bitter speech. The initial reaction was quite negative. Now we actually appeared to be not too far away. Um, we actually appeared to be pushing higher yet again. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how, we'll see how it goes in other markets. That's the Dow Jones. I take a look now at the S and P 500. See what's going on there. Actually, I'll leave it on a minute chart to really kind of see. I think we're going to see. This is going to be. This is such a massive number. I think traders are going to have to, have to kind of wrap their head around this one, to try to figure out which way around is it for their position. I think it's a good. It's a great number. It's a very good number. Um, but I think traders are going to wonder what's that going to mean in terms of Fed. I think it's going to justify the Fed to keep down their their path of hiking rates. To be honest, I don't think they necessarily should. I think they should be kind of play it by ear and see how the global economy is playing out. But if the Federal Reserve are data dependent. This is in very good numbers. We can see here, similar again, the market sold up quite heavily, it's rebounded, but it seems to be kind of trying to find its feet. We're probably not going to have a, a, a really good view of this um, on the, in terms of equities for a few minutes anyways. Uh, so I'll take a quick look now to look at the US dollar index. This should be dollar positive. Um, this is a very good, decent report all around. As you can see here, I'll take a quick look now on the one minute chart. Just uh, take a look now. Saw so a fairly sizable increase there on the uh, on the US dollar. There we go. Just gone half. Just gone half past the hour. Market the market uh, took off there. Uh, well ahead. Um, very very positive indeed. Very much dollar positive for this for the um for the, for the for uh, in terms of the story today. Given that there has been a, a decline in the greenback since about the middle of December, we can see a kind of steady kind of decline. This could be the move which actually could actually look to actually kind of bring us higher again because I think traders should be looking at this report thinking, you know what, the US economy is in decent shape. And, and particularly at the backdrop of a weaker Europe and a weaker China. Uh, take a look now at gold markets. See a big sell off in gold. Obviously, recently there's been, um, in recent months, there's been a very strong inverse relationship between what goes on in gold and what goes on in the US dollar. We could take a look here when the numbers came out, bam, at half one. Gold earlier on in the session re reached fresh six-month highs um, in the early hours um, of Friday mornings, and we, we were declining into the numbers. And guess what? The numbers were very good. Market actually sold off quite heavily. Uh, well, actually, not, not heavily, but an unexpected move to the downside in the gold market. So we could see further pressure to the downside in gold in the near term. Gold is, uh, is very sensitive to perceptions about what the Federal Reserve are going to do. Um, and now I think. Um, like I said, to, re to reiterate, I think this would, if the, if they do want to just, if they do want to keep hiking rates, I think today's numbers would justify their decision to kind of at least point in the direction of tighter monetary policy from the Federal Reserve. So it's a, it's a, uh, it's a good report, and it's a bad, it's a bad move for gold. But if you take a look at the gold market here, gold had a colossal sell-off between April and August, and then August, it started the sta stage to come back again, mid-August, move to the upside, put, uh, I know higher high. Higher low, higher high, higher low, and I started to grind a bit higher here in, 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 in kind of mid February. Sorry, apologies, December rather than December. Getting ahead of myself, I started to push higher in December. It didn't really, it's about lackluster. It's only in the last few weeks when trade, when, when equity markets started to fear, you know what, this talk of recession picking up, this talk of recession. Um, John Williams, the Federal Reserve, in late December said maybe the Fed should reassess its, uh, its situation, its, its, its outlook. Um, and actually suggest that the Fed maybe going to take, to take the cut off the gas in terms of their hiking policy. 
So what we saw was we saw gold just pushing up, pushing higher from late December through early January. Gold has been creeping higher, I've been driving higher rather. So a bit of a pullback today isn't a major surprise. If we do see further decline in gold, we could see the support come into play in around the 1275 region or perhaps in around the 1265 region. Uh, but we've been in a fairly decent upward trend since August, so it's a fairly obvious trend. If we continue to push in higher, we could be looking at taking off the 1300 level on gold. Are there any other markets you'd like me to take a look at? I'll take a look at the, at the euro versus the US dollar. Like I said this morning, we're disappointing Eurozone CPI numbers and also service figures um, from the likes of France and so from Germany and, and France. So basically, the, the, the euro, euro dollar has been basically in a, in a downward trend since April. Um, it had a bit of a rebound in August. But since September, markets been pushing lower yet again. And we've kind of been in a bit of a holding pattern, a bit of a range for the, for the last number of weeks. Um, but for me, the 115, 115.10 region has been, an area, has been an area to keep an eye on. Um, while we were in south of that region here, I think it's likely we could see further downward pressure in the, uh, in the euro versus the US dollar. Um, if the market does continue to push on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the, uh, the, the early November low, the kind of early November lows of 1 spot 12.16. And if you go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards 1 spot 11.10. Move to the upside if you break north of 115, 115, 10. Please keep an eye out for the 200 moving average here, this red line, which comes into play in around the 1 spot 16, 55 area. I'll take a look now at pound dollar as well. If there are any markets you want me to take a look at, now is the time to shout. Um, dollar card, yes, I will come on the dollar card in one second because we also had Canadian numbers out today, which you didn't actually, actually, didn't actually get the, actually, uh, get, didn't get a chance. To look at or to call up what's going on in the, in the American situation. So the pound has been very, very decent decline versus the US dollar since September. Now, in my opinion, the, US, the British economy is in fairly decent shape. Um, unemployment, multi decade lows, earnings are solid, but the Brexit uncertainty is the real issue. Um, and I think we, we could see limited moves to the upside in the pound while so much uncertainty in relation to Brexit is, is hanging over. So in my view, if you, if, you, if you can remain below this area here at 1 spot 28.15, I think we could see further ground to be lost on the pound. Um, if we do look to push on lower, we could be looking at taking off this area here again at 1 spot 24.76. We did trade, we did, we did trade it uh, through it last night whenever there was the, uh, the flash crash in the, uh, in, the, in the currency markets, and we saw major moves um, directly in dollar-yen. Uh, but I think if... if um, if you, if you continue to push on lower from there, I think that is, that is kind of a uh, degenerate trajectory for the uh, for the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, one gentleman was calling out for the US dollar, Canadian dollar. I'll have a quick look at the Canadian numbers. Uh, in terms of the headline unemployment, good sad numbers out of Canada. Um, the unemployment rate held steady at 5.6%, so better than expected on that front. It came in. Um, at five, they're expecting 5.7 to tick up. The uh, empl the employment change increase um, by hard expected over 9,300 jobs were, were added. Were added. Uh, if you take a look at that, um, the full time jobs are declined and part time jobs increased. So that isn't as good as a, it's it's a good number, but it's not as good as, as the headline would suggest. I would like to see it the other way around. I want to see full time jobs being created and Part-time jobs are kind of a, are kind of a secondary. Although obviously jobs are jobs, but nonetheless, it's a bit worrying that that you know full-time employment dropped by nearly 19,000, whereas part-time jobs increased by over 20, 28,000. Um, but I would say overall, it's a fair decent report. Unemployment remained remain, remain held steady, and I suppose net net some uh, additional jobs is positive. Take a look, look 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 now at the U.S. dollar versus the Canadian dollar, the dollar CAD. If there are any other markets you want me to have a look at, please feel free to just shout them off because I'll be looking in the, uh, the chat box uh, in a few minutes. We, we'll be looking to wind things up in a few minutes' time. So what we could see here is we saw, from the kind of fundamental point of view, U.S. numbers, the U.S. report was like an A- in my view. It's a very strong report. Not perfect, but it was very strong. Whereas the Canadian numbers were solid. They were good, but they weren't amazing. Unemployment was steady. Jobs were created, but they were largely in the part-time part sector. So we could see here... That, we, that the dollar cash has had a terrific run uh, between the lows of October and the kind of in around the Christmas period. So solid upward trend. So so you know you know look at the 
the trend is clearly to the upside. Granted, we have seen a fairly sizable pullback in the last couple of sessions, but now that we have uh, the numbers out, out of the way, we could look to actually could potentially continue on this wider trend. Um, if we do move further to the downside in the dollar CAD, we might see some support come into play in around this area here, in around the kind of 133.85 region, this area here. Uh, perhaps even as low down as uh, this blue line here, the 50 day moving average at one spot at 33.10. We could see the market pull back to there because, you know, a bit of profit taken is going to be a surprise. But given that, in my view, the US report outshone the Canadian numbers, I think we could see potentially see a recontinuation of the wider upward trend, uh, which could take us back up towards this area here in at one spot 36.60 in, in around that area. Uh, and if we do print that level, we then be t looking with we then be back at prices not seen since May 2017. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards the high 137s, so kind of 137.90 region here, um, in terms of the dollar CAD outlook. I'll take a look now at what's going on at some of the uh, US markets, see what the kind of reaction is after they've settled down. It always takes a few minutes for the numbers to be digested. Like I was saying, uh, the webinar will be coming to an end, unfortunately, in about two or three minutes. So if there's any markets you want me to cover, um, please feel free. So what we can see now is kind of back to my original guess, a bit of the downside. Um, so the initial sell-off, market bounce back, a lot of, kind of, a lot of um, uncertainty going on. Traders are finding their feet. But look, notice how we're trading here. So we are below. We're, you know, we're not, not too far below, but in the Dow, we're definitely below the levels we were at before the numbers came out. So in terms of you know wider view, what to expect, um, the way I see it is this, is that the Dow Jones, uh, back in late late um, late December, fell back to the levels not seen uh, in quite some time. Fell back to the levels not seen since basically the summer of 2017. And we've been in a classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs. The market, This could be the market turning over on itself yet again. And traders do become fearful that, that the, the Fed are going to continue down their hiking path. We could see the market heading back down towards 23,000, and a break below that could, could put us in head, put us down towards 21,500. And if we go below that, we could be looking heading down towards 20,000. Apologies, down to 21,000. I take a look now at what's going on. Do I think the US dollar will continue to strengthen? Yes, I do in the near term. Uh, I do think I'll take a look at the dollar index. As I said, um, with the euro dollar and pound dollar, I think we're going to see declines of both. Take a quick look now again at the US dollar index. The dollar index here has been in decline. Well, the wider picture has been fairly positive, but um, uh, the dollar index basically since mid since mid December the dollar index has been in decline. But I do think, given that today's numbers, and especially in light of what's going on in the UK, the eurozone, and China, we could see a bit of a plight of quality. And also, today's numbers are actually are on, on the jobs front are good. So I think in the dollar index, we could be looking at heading back up towards um, the, the, the you know we could be heading back up towards the uh, 96.5 area. And if you take off that, we could be looking, if, you, if, you, if you get up back up towards 96 and a half, 97. That would then could actually kind of get talk going again. That we're actually going to continue the wider upward trend in the dollar index. So I think this is a good set of numbers from the US, and we could see further gains for the US dollar. I take a look now at dollar yen. Dollar yen, unfortunately, will have to be the last market I looked at because it's uh, it's quarter to quarter to one. So obviously we had a well, a bit of a flash crash, but a major, fairly severe decline in dollar yen yesterday. Uh, this could look to actually pull pull some pull some ground around, uh, just kick on the back of the strength of the strength of the numbers. But it, it's also worth pointing out, we did have a very decent run between March and also October. So a bit of a pullback in this regard here isn't an entire surprise. I am very concerned though that the market remains below the 200-day moving average, this red line here, which comes to play at 1 111 spot 07. While we remain south of it, uh, I could think we we could see further ground to be lost uh, on the dollar yen. But given we've had a few, you know, one, two, three, four, five negative days in a row on the dollar yen, um, and a good number today out of the out of the US US in terms of jobs, I don't think we could see a bit of a bounce back in the, in the dollar yen in the near term. We could be looking at back up towards the 110 mark, uh, and, if, and then if you do manage to retake 
uh, the trailer moving average, we could then see um, had it, it could be had it, any backup towards the kind of 112, 113 uh, spot 70 region. But I would be a bit, uh, I would be hesitant while we are south of the 200 moving average. If the market does look to, to turn over on itself yet again, we could be looking at re heading back down towards the 105 region. Right, I'm going to wrap things up there. Um, this video um, is going to be online. It's going to be uh, both on our, on our YouTube channel. I'll tweet it out. It's also going to be on our insights. And insights can be found under this, this uh, squig that I have here. Um, so the second option down is insights. I'll be posting a recording on this video to insights uh, within the next hour. Uh, I do appreciate um, all your time um, for, for tuning in and for listening. Um, one last thing before I go, if you have any comments to make, on this video or any of the other videos uh, we make here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.